we'll be discussing this and some other issues coming up after the election at uh, Zambia with Mata Wukamelo, a researcher, Public Finance Management Center for Trade and Policy Development. So good to have you. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Mata. Thank you so much for having me, and thank you. Yeah. So what does uh, Mr. or the President Hichilemas mean? What does it mean for Zambians? We know there was a lot of controversy with the former president and all that. What does it mean? Well, looking at where Zambia is coming from, I think that the, the victory of Mr. Haga in the Hichilema really uh, is one that brings hope to the, to the, uh, to the Zambians. It's one uh, that gives uh, that um, sense of hope that the economy is likely to rebound. Um, we look at the environment within which uh, Zambia went to the polls. Uh, this is an environment where Zambia recorded a deteriorated macroeconomic uh, outlook in the year 2020 with economic growth uh, contracting. Uh, by about 3%. The cost of living also uh, rising rapidly with inflation uh, going in excess of 23%. Um, and the biggest problem in the country has been uh, the huge stock of public debt. We did see the outgoing government uh, trying to uh, make efforts in terms of restructuring the debt, uh, but uh, uh, those efforts did not yield uh, the desired results. So it is hoped by many Zambians that uh, Mr. Hichlema is going to be the man that will be able to uh, pull uh, our, our, our creditors to the negotiating table and, and try to renegotiate our, our public debt, restructure the debt uh, to create some fiscal space within the national budget uh, to steer economic recovery. Thank you. Yeah, a, a lot of expectations placed on his shoulder at this time. Do we have an idea of what policies or plans he has? For instance, like you said, to get the country out of debt, to bring back economy recovery into the country. Do we have an idea of his perspective or line direction of policies? Okay, so uh, what we have now are basically statements of intent from the, the manifesto of the party in government, the United Party for National Development. But we do expect to see a little bit more in terms of the policy direction this, uh, this coming Tuesday uh, during the inauguration ceremony as the president-elect delivers his inaugural speech uh, we expect him to set the tone uh, in terms of the policy direction. But some of the issues that um, he has highlighted and that we expect him to bring to the table is, uh, you know, the return of investor confidence and also the confidence of, of the creditors uh, in our, our uh, macroeconomic uh, uh, management strategy, which is something that we, we saw lacking in the previous government. Uh, there's an issue of uh, transparency and accountability in as far as the utilization of public resources. Uh, is concerned. This is an issue that uh, kept on coming as well in the previous government. This is one thing that Zambians expect the new president to address the issues of corruption, to ensure that uh, there are no leakages to the Treasury, uh, and, and uh, to ensure that we have more and more uh, policies that create an environment for small businesses to thrive and uh, to steer economic activity, that will ensure that uh, uh, various economic agents are able to contribute uh, to the domestic resource envelope, reduce the need uh, for the country to go back on the market and, and borrow more in terms of financing its uh, various uh, uh, government programs. Well, a whole lot of expectations uh, there. We do hope that he keeps to his promises. But what is his stance uh, regarding the Zambian mines and mining industry? Okay, so in terms of the mining industry, again, we are yet to really see the actual policy direction that uh, the new government will take. But what we've heard so far, uh, issues around the need to strike a balance between um, uh, investors that come in to, to, to uh, operate these mines and, and uh, the Zambian people. Uh, to understand where we're coming from in terms of the mining industry, uh, you'd, have, you'd have to appreciate that we're coming from an environment where in the 1960s to 1990s, uh, we had these mines being run by government until we uh, privatized the mines around uh, early 1990s and now. Uh, we saw the outgoing government towards the end of their tenure trying to come up with a strategy to repossess some of the mines. Uh, but what we've heard the president-elect speaking about, uh, he has emphasized the need to create a fiscal uh, environment, a fiscal regime that is going to ensure that uh, uh, the mining sector operates profitably so that uh, those run, running the mines are benefiting just as much as uh, Zambia benefits from uh, the proceeds of the mining sector. Just to mention that the mining sector, as it stands, contributes uh, in excess of 70% of the foreign exchange that uh, Zambia earns. 
uh, at the moment. So there's a lot of uh, uh, expectation in terms of what the president-elect needs to do uh, in the sector to support productivity, but also to diversify, to reduce the reliance of the country on copper, whose prices we know um, are cyclic. They go up and, uh, and go down. So there's also need to sort of diversify. There's, uh, there was a discovery of other minerals, such as gold, for instance, uh, within last year and the other year, and uh, that's an area that really needs to be explored by investors. And we do hope that uh, the president-elect uh, creates an environment that is going to ensure that uh, our mining sector also explores these other minerals to reduce the over-reliance of the economy on copper proceeds alone. Yeah, we certainly do hope that uh, with you also, and we wish you all the best uh, as you guys you know, settling with the new president. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Wukamelo Mata, researcher, Public Finance Management Center for Trade Policy and Development in Zambia. And enjoy your weekend. Pleasure is mine. Thank you so much.